Okay, so this is a story I've been actually holding on to for a while because we all know that the bathroom stories are just doing fantastic on this channel. I don't know why when it comes to the all gender bathroom, the school bathroom, or even the Walmart bathroom, you guys go insane for it. And sorry if my voice sounds a little deeper than usual. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am a little sick. I did receive COVID the last following week, so that's probably why the uploads have been that fantastic. But as usual, this is a brand new story just for you guys. And obviously it is a bathroom story. So let's get straight into this. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe seriously i think only like 79 percent of you guys aren't subscribed which is kind of a big l and you know if you guys just press the subscribe button it'll mean a lot now let's get straight into this outstanding but yet kind of crazy story yo what is going on you guys my name's bubba and welcome back to another crazy story so like i said the bathroom stories they're doing fantastic honestly i might as well start a series on this at this point but today is a brand new one and i'm not gonna lie we took things to the limits and by limits i guess i should say height limits limits because today was in a bathroom but not no ordinary bathroom an airplane bathroom now many of you guys are probably asking how did you do this that is not possible how in the world did you do it on an airplane bathroom and honestly i'm here to tell you guys it's actually not that complicated so back when i was in high school i remember i took a french course or like you know basically a language speaking course because it is a university requirement down here in canada i don't know about anywhere else which is funny because i never actually went to university or college wow you guys really changed my life on that one but uh basically i'm not gonna lie there was no like good course other than French to take because you know that's the like the one French Canadians or Canadians at least learn throughout the years of like growing up we would always have like some sort of French class so I remember I took a French course and I remember during this French course we basically like learned like the basics of French blah 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 bonjour ça va ça va bien you know all that basic French stuff I'm not gonna lie I'm not the best at French but it is what it is and I remember in my French class there was this one chick who was actually like really good at French like I'm not even joking she was outstanding she knew like every word she she knew all like the you know feminine and like masculine translations like she was really good at french okay like it was outstanding and i remember you know i always wanted her to like help me out with french and stuff like that and she she would she would gladly help me out with doing a bunch of different things and you know basically help me do my homework or in circumstances i watch her as she does my homework because she was pretty attractive and i remember one time as we were all doing homework in like our groups and stuff like that our teacher walked in and said that we we're doing a trip to france now this was obviously a surprise for us because you know whoa a school's funding a big trip but at the same time we did have to pay like a pretty big payment of that but you know that's not the point the payment wasn't the issue the issue was was that i'm not gonna lie to you i didn't really have any friends in that class i didn't have any friends in that well let's just say classroom other than the hot chick that helped me do my homework so i remember what i decided to do was like basically like you know talk to her through snapchat and basically like you know kind of talked her up because i didn't really want to be alone on this trip and also isn't like france or paris like you know like the city of love or whatever I i'm not sure whatever i I tried to connect that in some way, but you know, I guess not. Anyways, I remember as like, you know, I started packing my bags and stuff because my parents let me go on the trip. I was like kind of like planning on like, you know, how romantic it would be if me and her, you know, I don't know, did some cool stuff together, like a date somewhat. I don't know. I was kind of like a helpless romantic at that moment and anything worked in my book. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you guys. So I remember I was talking to her up the whole night before our flight and, you know, I was just, you know, talking to her, being nice to her, you know, making it seem like we were a thing. And I guess in her mindset, that we were also which was like a big w and i remember as like you know we were getting ready for the flights and stuff and you know i got to the bus stop or the school that was gonna take the bus to the airport she was like kind of like always like near me and stuff to the point where like it seemed like to the class like we were gonna be a thing so like everyone like you know screw off which was really good in my opinion which was really like beneficial <laughs> i wasn't alone yay that's that's the first so once we got on the bus i remember she like kept like sitting beside me and like kind of like getting close to me to the point where we actually started making out the bus and i'm not gonna lie you know when you're sitting at the back of the bus you already know your boy's gonna be getting some no i'm, I'm kidding that's not really the quick case here but i mean we didn't get some until later but that's that's not the point basically me and her were just making out in the back of the bus doing our own thing you know just everyone's just doing their you know savas and practicing their intros for when they get to france when me in reality i was just practicing my french kissing i would guess <laughs> that's a good one I, i'm okay but yeah, basically, I remember when we got to the airport, me and her were like planning on sitting together and stuff like that. So we did. We sat beside each other and we got on the plane. And once we got on the flight, things got a little iffy. Now, I remember she kept like coming near me and stuff. And the plane was so boring. And I remember we tried watching a movie together, but the movie was like a romantic movie she wanted to watch. And let's just say like after a while, I'm not going to lie. I guess she was just really in the mood. Like, I don't know how to tell if a chick's like horny per se, but you know, it, 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 you can kind of 
can't just tell. Like, I don't think you have to feel them up just to understand that. At least not in my book. I don't know. I guess I've gotten too well known to this, which is kind of funny. But yeah, basically, she was like coming near me and stuff. And I it got to the point where I was like, screw it. Like, let's do it. Like, like, what's the worst that can happen? But obviously, I wasn't gonna do it on the airport seats. In my mind, I was thinking about doing it there. But then she turns her head over to me and she was like, Do you want to go to the bathroom, maybe? And when she said that, I was like, not a bad idea. I don't know what it was. When she mentioned the bathroom, I guess, you know, I my eyes opened up with like a big idea like popped on my head and saying like you know yeah we could do in the airport bathroom so obviously we did but we didn't know how we were gonna get each other both back there so i remember my plan was very very different uh than hers at least her idea was just to go back there and say screw it like who's gonna have what what's the worst that can happen but my idea was a bit more well engineered what i would do is that I would go to the back where like the teachers were sitting and ask them about some like Frenchery stuff. And as I'm asking, distracting the, you know, teachers, I guess I should say, she would pretend to like talk to like the flight attending or the person that brings the cool food and stuff. And as we're both like distracted talking to people, instead of heading back to our seats, we just head straight to the back, to the bathroom. But obviously it wasn't gonna be that easy. We also had to make sure that like, you know, there was no one in the actual bathroom and there was no lineup. So we had to wait for a perfect time so i remember me and her were just sitting there waiting for the bathroom to be cleared and by the time the bathroom was cleared let's just say everyone was already sleeping like i'm not even joking surprisingly every single student was passed out on their airport seat it was like the perfect moment so i remember i you know she like stood up and grabbed my hand she's like i'm not waiting anymore and she took us back there and she literally took me to the bathroom when i got to the bathroom with her i'm not gonna lie this bathroom was so tiny like this thing was small like there was no way anyone could do anything in here but honestly you know when you gotta do it you just do it so i remember you know she started pushing me up against the wall blah 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 long story short we ended up doing the devil's tango wow that sounded really better with my covid voice that sounds sick but anyways yeah so you know we did the devil's tango and it went on for i want to say like 20 minutes we tried to make it quick as possible okay and i remember you know as that was going on i remember she like made a noise and i guess someone decided to knock on the door and say hello anyone in there at that moment I was like freaking out and so was she because she's like what do we do without getting caught so I remember I turned on the sink acting like I was washing my hands and basically I was saying oh yeah just give me a minute here so obviously now like the person that was knocking on the door knows someone was in there and basically I remember what I had to do was make him like distracted in some sort of way so I remember yelling through the door oh like I'm actually bleeding can you go get like my teacher and obviously he was like oh yeah like I'll help out like let me go get him so he went back there and he went to go get my teacher and basically I told her like right at that moment like you got to get the heck out of here so i remember i literally grabbed her and i pushed her out of there she literally went out and she like went back to her seat and stuff and then the teacher asked like oh like is you know bubba back there and she said yeah bubba's back there he's just you know bleeding i think and at this moment i didn't know what i was gonna do because i was just in the bathroom with the water on just washing my hands praying that i would like bleed out of nowhere and let's just say obviously i can't make myself bleed <laughs> i mean I, I could but that that that's 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 no i can't i self-harm is not a good thing for me no thank you especially in these circumstances so i remember i <laughs> i'm not even joking this was the funniest part i think he came to the bathroom he's like oh just open the door like i'll help you out like i'm here to help he comes into the bathroom he sees me with just my hands soaking wet and i'm like oh like i washed it off and i think i'm gonna be okay and in the end then like you know i basically pretended that it was like leaned off and then the airport attendant came there as well and she handed me a bandit and i just put on the most like random spot on my hand and we went and sat down once we went and sat down basically like she sat down beside me she gave me a high five or like actually it was a fist bump you know we're gonna say it was a high five and yeah that's basically it and long story short i ended up doing it in the airport bathroom or airplane bathroom it wasn't really at the airport it was at the airplane <laughs> so yeah you know i never realized i would take things to great limits or great height limits but this was successful oh boy just great another bathroom story outstanding now i know i've already done a bathroom story before if you guys have seen the channel and you guys literally destroyed it and i remember mentioning one of my like recent videos that you know i had a story time about how i did it in a walmart bathroom and funny enough this is actually true i did the devil's tango in the walmart bathroom now how did this happen is pretty weird but honestly all i gotta say is is that i feel like bathrooms are like our new safe haven like honestly i feel so much safer in a bathroom like i don't know why i guess probably because they have locks on the door and my bedroom doesn't have a lock on the door and anyone could just walk in you know what that's a story for another time all right yo what is going on you guys my name's bubba and welcome back to another crazy story so like i said in the title yes this is 
is actually about me doing the devil's tangle in the Walmart bathroom. Now, I know what you're thinking. Obviously, you guys are probably typing down in the comments being like, oh my goodness, this guy has such fake stories. Like, I believe none of them are real. And you know what? We could argue all day, but this is my life and this is literally what happened. So let's get straight into it. So obviously, this story starts back in high school. So back in high school, I remember I was just chilling, doing my own thing, and I had a social studies class. You guys don't know what social studies is. Well, it sucks because it's literally just talking about all the past mistakes that this world have done, which I guess, you know, this continues happening. <laughs> but anyways, when I entered my social studies class, I saw our seating arrangement change. Now, if you guys don't know what a seating arrangement is, basically, like, we have, like, our own desks, and, you know, like, usually we would change it into groups or into rows. You know, it's just a mix and match kind of thing. And I remember my desk changed to a spot beside a really hot chick. Or girl. Sorry, I know you guys don't want me to say chick, so I'm gonna say girl. Now, this girl was outstanding, and she was amazing. She looked great. She, she had a beautiful scent on her. And I'm not saying go sniff girls, but I'm saying she smelled good. And I remember, like, you know, as we were, like, we were sitting beside socials and stuff, we had, like, a socials class on, like, I don't know, I think we were talking about something. I don't remember what exactly, because I kept, like, getting distracted by the chick beside me. But I remember me and her were kind of, like, nudging each other. We were being kind of flirtatious here and there and stuff like that. And this went on for like almost a week. Now, funny enough, I didn't ask for a Snapchat, nothing. Cause she told me like she doesn't have Snapchat, which is a total false information, by the way. I think every girl has Snapchat. If they don't, then they're definitely hiding something. But you know, she always told me she didn't. And obviously, you know, as time went on, I remember one day as we were in social studies class, she was looking at me and saying, what are you doing after school? Now me being the weird, annoying, kind of shy person, I was like, oh, nothing, you know, just probably gonna go home, you know, just to work out. You know, I, I said some, BS that wasn't actually gonna happen. And then she's like, oh, I mean, like, do you want to come to the mall with me? I have to do some shopping. Now, I never got invited to the mall by a chick before at this time. It was kind of weird thinking about it because I was worried it's gonna be in, like another sugar mama situation. But surprising enough, you know, she was pretty good off, you know, on her own. So I was like, uh, yeah, sure, why not? So I remember after school came, me and her, we ended up, you know, getting our things and we head over to the mall. So fun fact, the mall was literally super close to us. Like, the, I could literally say the mall was like maybe like a five minute walk from my high school and as we were you know at the mall we were walking around we went around the food court and stuff i remember my friend was texting me and he was saying yo are you getting on xbox like are you gonna hop on today and me being the dumb person i was i was like no dude like i'm out with a hot chick right now like she's so hot she wants me to hang out with her in the mall and obviously my friends are like dude like for the boys bro like what are you doing bro i don't know honestly i regret it to this day because for the boys man for the boys but going on i remember as we were roaming around this mall she was like kind of like like again nudging me and obviously like you know it got to the point where she was like getting close to me and stuff and then i remember we went over to like a sports shop or whatever i think it was like sport check or something i'm not sure what and we entered in there and she was telling me how like she plays golf and stuff and you know she wants to be a golfer and stuff like that i don't know it was like a whole bunch of cap like it sounded like cap i'm gonna be honest but i remember she was like telling me like oh like i'm gonna hold the putter like this and i know a lot of us have seen in movies like you know that romantic like putter grab where like the guy goes around her and like you know kind of like thrusts her and helps her use the putter i don't know it was some i don't, I don't know how to explain it in like a pg form so this video doesn't get demonetized but you know what i mean so i do that with her and you know i kind of like show her how to use it because obviously it's like those demo putter areas where you could like practice your puttering and then she was like telling me like how she like liked it as i was like holding her and stuff and it, it got really really intense in a way so i remember after she said she wanted to go get snacks at walmart so this is where things get very interesting and i think you guys are gonna start freaking out after this one she literally takes us to walmart or me to walmart i should say she kind of like you know hangs out around me and you know does that kind of like you know oh like this is cool this is cool oh, this is a good snack and then we kind of like really like got close at some moment i don't remember what i think she was showing me a lightsaber or some toy i don't remember and then we like we were both holding it and then after that like i guess we started like kind of making out in the toy section i don't know if there was any kids around i hope not actually the more i think about it and then she's like follow me now she literally grabbed me kind of by the wrist well thumb and wrist it was kind of like a weird handhold in a way and she took me over to the walmart bathroom now she told me stay here and in 30 seconds come to the bathroom she goes into like the disability bathroom or you know the bathroom where it has like that cool like guy sitting on the cool chair thing i always thought it was a toilet seat when i was younger but i guess it's like a chair now i don't know or a wheelchair oh boy if it's a wheelchair i feel bad and basically 30 seconds later i went into that bathroom and she was like take off your pants and as obviously you guys do know it yes this is actually something that happened we did the devil's tango in the Walmart bathroom. This went on for, I want to say like 10 minutes because I thought it was going to be a quickie, bro. Like I had to make it quick, simple, and straight out. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, you know, me and her, we were able to make that happen because, you know, I guess we were both really professionals at doing the devil's tango. So after that, I remember like she like, 
instantly started putting her clothes on. She went out of the bathroom first. And then me standing there, like I just finished getting ready. And I was just like, you know, fixing my hair and stuff in the mirror. So it doesn't look like I got like totally just destroyed in the bathroom. And then as I was fixing my hair, she left. And I want to say like two seconds later, an old guy walked in. And the old guy just looks at me. And he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know this was taken. I didn't know you were in the lineup. This old guy definitely knew what was going on. I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but this old guy definitely knew what happened. And he just turned around and didn't really want to question it. And I remember I left the bathroom and I like left. And for some reason, there was some Walmart worker just kind of like looking at me. And he was kind of staring me down. And then I saw the old guy actually going up to the Walmart worker and like pointing at me. And let's just say, as usual as I usually do, I walked out of there and kind of just ran outside and ran back to the school so I can just disappear. Because, I don't know, I guess school is kind of a safe haven as well, the more I think about it. And long story short, I never talked to the chick again, because that was the most dumbest thing I ever had to do. Now, moral of the story is, be careful, and don't do it in public places. In reality, get your own place, get a bed, and do the devil's tango. There. Respect your parents. Okay, so according to the title of this video, yes, we are back at it again with another bathroom story. Um, I know it sounds crazy, because we've done so many of these to the point where it's actually getting, well, as you guys would say, unbelievable. But honestly, let's be realistic here like you gotta understand i'm a guy who loves bathrooms bathrooms are one of the most private places ever either i want to sit in there and watch jacksepticeye or bring a girl in there with me and do the devil's tango and this story is exactly that but this time as you guys can tell from the title in the mcdonald's bathroom yo what is going on you guys my name is bubba and welcome back to another crazy story so today's story is something totally crazy and honestly it's something that i didn't want to tell but let's be realistic here you guys love the bathroom stories i tell from me doing it into the airplane bathroom to the girls change room which is not a bathroom but i guess it counts as a bathroom and now of course the mcdonald's bathroom so i want to say this story takes place back when i was like in grade nine now funny enough i'm not gonna lie i didn't look the best in grade nine hell i looked like this for god's sakes like i literally made videos looking like this and still pulling women and before anyone says anything like oh my goodness you look like that and you pulled someone yeah you're such a capper like no way that's real honestly guys let's be realistic here if you think you only need good looks to pull women you are ultimately probably the most brain dead person i ever met on this planet like you guys realize that like personality is a thing i know shocking i didn't believe it at first either but apparently if you have a good personality girls will attach to you like magnets but going on i remember one time i was kind of just going through my school hallway and i was just kind of walking around and obviously at the time i had a friend who had this like girlfriend who also had a friend that semi actually somewhat knew about me now to be honest i didn't know what she knew about me because in grade nine i wasn't really like full on into my slaying days if that makes sense. Like, I didn't actually, like, start slaying women and being awesome with my eggplant until, like, I don't know, I want to say, like, grade 10, 11, and 12-ish. But this was, like, a totally new thing. And honestly, like, me, honestly, I think I was just mostly known for how I used to rage on video games all the time. Like, I'm not joking when I say this. If I had to slam on the desk, I would. And I guess one time, like, I had friends over and they recorded me doing that. And I guess that kind of went around the school. But I remember one time, there was this one girl. And like I said, she was friends with my friend's girlfriend at the time. And I remember she was walking down the hallway and she bumped into me and by bumping i don't mean like that weird cinematic bump where it's like in the movies you see like in spider-man or something like this was an actual like genuine like bump like i literally bumped into her and like literally all her books dropped and everything it was actually yeah the more i think about it it was like kind of like the movies but in a way in the movies usually the guy would bend down on a knee and help out psych i'm no simp i didn't bend down for anything to be honest i kind of just watched her pick up all her books i know kind of mean of me but at the same time you know show dominance <laughs> that's that sounds so mean but going on so i remember she was picking up her books she ended up looking up at me and i ended up looking at her eyes and me and her kind of had like, like that staring session that most people enjoy for some reason i don't know she was kind of staring at me i was kind of staring at her and it got to the point where she actually stood up and said hey like aren't you like bubba and then i look at her and i'm like uh yeah like what's what's going on she looked at me and then after that she looked at her phone and she's like oh like i don't have to be in class for like the next like i don't know 10 minutes you want to like maybe walk and talk i got nothing to do and all my friends are in class and me looking down at my clock knowing i actually had to go to class but a hot girl asking me to kind of miss class was not really a bad thing, I guess. Don't skip classes, but at the same time, you do your own choices. So I remember I ended up saying, uh, yeah, sure. Like, I'm down to like, you know, walk around, hang out. Like, not an issue. So that's what we ended up doing. We ended up walking around the school. We started talking and stuff. And, you know, we had a good conversation. Most of the conversation was about my friend and his girlfriend because, you know, apparently they had like a lot of beef throughout the years. I don't know why. I 
guess girls like talking about other girls beefs and relationship issues but then i kind of got straight to the point because let's be real here the boys don't smack talk the other boys unless you're not a boy then I, I don't know what you're doing and i started talking about her i ended up saying so like what about you like you got any like guy issues because you know i'm kind of scoping out the land trying to see like what's going on and she says to me oh like recently like me and my boyfriend kind of just you know broke up it kind of sucked but you know like i think it's time for me to like go out do crazy things and just say yes to things in life when i heard her say that i'm not joking i was kind of looking on the internet to see where i heard that quote from because let's be realistic here no girl says that but then she started talking about how she like started like really not caring about things she wants to do and she just kind of wanted to express herself and explore and fun fact i ended up saying this right after i mean like you know i kind of get that like i'm kind of the same way you know i'm exploring my things too you know because that was the beginning stage of my slaying devil's tango age and then she looked at me and then he kind of just started talking more and more and then i had her on snap and then i went back to my class when i went back to my class honestly i don't know what it is when i first talked to women but i kind of feel that nice attachment not attachment issues but like you know i started like being like you know flirtatious with her so me and her start snapping back and forth throughout class i'm not even joking i don't think i got any schoolwork done and me and her were just talking back and forth back and forth and like non-stop pop and then i remember she snapped me saying hey like i'm going to mcdonald's like after school do you want to like maybe come with me like you know maybe get like a Big Mac or something. Kind of weird for a girl to ask me at McDonald's. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I've heard like girls ask me to go to Chipotle or you know, go to like even sushi, like you know, but like McDonald's kind of a first for me. I'm not gonna lie. So I ended up just saying, Oh yeah, sure, like I'm down to go to Don's. Cause honestly, let's be realistic here. I ended up paying, it would be cheap because McDonald's is cheap, so might as well. So I ended up going to McDonald's with her after school. And when we started walking down there, she started like kind of like getting close to me, kind of leaning towards me, kind of you know, let's just say she was closer than average. Like it got to the point where I I actually did end up putting my hand around her waist. So me looking like this, pulling a girl like that and putting my hand around her waist, it, honestly, it, it's like the Matrix. It just didn't make sense. The Matrix does make sense. I was joking about that, but never mind. Going on. So when me and her went into the McDonald's, we sat down and we started like putting our books out and everything because apparently we were going to study, which let's be real here is definitely cap, but you know, whatever. And we ended up going to like this like cool thing where you can like order your food on like this cool big machine thing. It's kind of futuristic looking. I don't know. For me, it was futuristic looking but uh, apparently it was like a new thing they added back when i was in high school and we did our order it ended up being like 25 bucks which is not a loss i'm gonna be honest and we went back to the table the person brought a food we started eating our food and then halfway through eating our food she ended up getting a text message from her ex-boyfriend now honestly here's some quick relationship advice with bubba if you have an ex person in your life make sure you actually explain and elaborate on the ex making sure that they're actually out of your life because i hate when people are like oh like i have like an ex-boyfriend and the boyfriend ends up showing up at her house like every second day like i'm sorry that's that's not an ex that's that's still your boyfriend you know it's common sense but when i saw that text message i was like oh like do you want me to like leave like i don't i don't want to intrude anything you know what i'm saying she ended up showing me her phone of what her ex-boyfriend texted her and her ex-boyfriend literally told her to kys i'm not gonna actually say it because i don't know what youtube monetization would do because let's be real here we're already on the borderline with these videos <laughs> don't ban me youtube and it got to the point where she actually almost ended up kind of looking down but then started being angry she ended up explaining to me how her boyfriend could never make her finish and she started like basically making fun of her boyfriend in bed and that was where my golden opportunity came in i instantly said oh, i mean like you know i'm a professional jokingly at first but then she took it seriously and said oh really now you're a professional and i started making that joke where i was like you know like yeah i'm a professional you know like i made that joke over and over to the point where she actually believed it and you know what she got in the mood and when she was in the mood i'm not gonna lie me i activated like a rocket like me and my eggplant were like go 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 like if i was a movie of inside out i think i would just have a bunch of eggplants in my head just jumping around saying my turn my turn my turn but going on i remember she ended up standing up and she actually started like you know grabbing my wrist and walking me over to the bathroom the only times girls grab my wrist is usually when they want to drag me somewhere to finish you know and do the devil's tango and that's what we did we ended up going straight into the girl's bathroom and yes we did go into the girl's bathroom this time not the guy's bathroom which was really weird for me but we went in there and after that we went into a bathroom stall and we ended up doing it we literally ended up doing the devil's tango for i want to say like maybe like 10 20 minutes we didn't we didn't go for that long because let's be real here it was in the bathroom actually it was kind of funny because we ended up like you know making noise while she was making noise i was mostly just you know i can't really say in detail what i'm you know what i did but it makes sense i did the devil's tango like that, that's the most i can really say here but the weirdest part was was that i remember hearing the door open and it was like a person that like just walked in it was like an old asian mom or something and she had her kid with her as well and i remember her kid like ended up looking under the stall as me and her were doing the devil's tango and she literally screamed this little asian girl ended up screaming her head 
off for some reason. And her mom's like, what's going on in there? What's going on? And uh, that's when I knew we were totally screwed. The girl that was in front of me that, you know, I ended up doing the devil's tango with ended up putting her clothes on as fast as damn possible. Like, I'm not joking. I think it took her like 1.5 seconds. And by that, I mean, she literally just pulled her pants up and pulled her shirt down. And me, I just, you know, put my pants on as fast as possible. And the next minute when we walk out of the stall to get out of there, I see the Asian mom. I see the Asian kid. And then I see a McDonald's worker. Great. That is ultimately fantastic. We got the whole audience. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was never a fan of having audiences when I did the devil's tango. Like, let's be realistic here. It's it's not fun to have an audience unless the audience was going to join in later. That, that sounds really bad. You know what? Never mind. I remember afterwards, we ended up like walking straight back to our table and the worker was like literally behind us. And when we sat down at our table, the worker came up to our table and said, you guys need to understand that like you guys can't like do that in our bathrooms. Like literally just get a room. Like, what are you talking about? And I remember me, I looked at the girl I did it with and we just kind of started giggling. And we're like, yeah, like, sorry about that. Like, you know, just teenager stuff, you know, just couldn't get the best of it. And then as she walked away, I remember the girl in front of me looked at me and said, that was literally so awesome. And I ended up, I guess, kind of showing her that saying yes to things in life is sometimes a good thing, even if it's just doing the devil's tango. But anyways, guys, that's basically it for the story. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe if you guys haven't already to this channel. And also make sure you guys join the Discord server and join the Twitch streams down below for more awesome, awesome stories. Now, like I always say, fall for more embarrassing stories. Peace out, guys. Doing it in the Starbucks bathroom. Now, this honestly was the most weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm going to be honest, I'm so surprised this even happened in the first place. Because as you guys may know, we have a crazy bathroom story series on this channel. And I didn't think this was going to be part of it, but it seems like it did. And the way this ended up happening was honestly intense and it was actually hilarious. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as well as I am currently live on Twitch. If you guys want to go check that out, go right for it. Links down in the bio. But let's get straight into this crazy story. What is going on, you guys? My name is Bubba and welcome back to another crazy story. So today's story, funny enough, takes place back when I was in grade 12. Back in grade 12, this was towards graduation year. And honestly, I remember one time me and my friends were all hanging out in the cafeteria. As we were all sitting around chilling in the cafeteria, I remember a friend of mine walks up to the table saying, yo, bro, like there's like these group of like white chicks just chilling outside. Do you want to go like go check them out? Me and my friends, we ended up standing up and going straight to the outside area where they were hanging out. I remember as we got there, we ended up looking around and kind of just looking at them and they were kind of glancing at us and knowing there was a group of girls and a group of guys, honestly, everything kind of worked out. Obviously, there was only four of the girls though and there was only five of us. So obviously one of the guys had to get laid back and by laid back, I mean like, you know, get away because no one likes a sixth wheel that would be. But then I remember that one of my friends walked up to me saying, bro, can, can, can you sit out for this one? Can, can I have a chance? I remember I looked at him and I like kind of like felt bad because like this sounds really rude of me to say, but he was the ugly one in the group. Like you guys cannot deny this in every friend group. There's always that one ugly person or that one person that never, how do I put this? It's not the most photogenic and I'm not tooting my own horn, but you know, from my resume of women compared to his, I, the only thing he had was his mom. So obviously knowing me, I did say to him, yeah, bro, like go for it. Like she, she looks, she, she looks better for you anyway. And I kind of leaned off. We ended up walking up to the group of girls. And I remember as we walked up to them, the group of girls were kind of like already like choosing who they kind of wanted. Cause even though we had a choice, they also had a choice of who they wanted. And I remember the girl walked up to me and she's like, Oh, like, so like, what's your name? And I kind of looked at her. I'm like, Oh, this is my buddy. Uh, his name is, uh, I'm not going to say what's his name guys. I, I don't actually can't say his name legally, but we're just going to call him Gerald. I said, Hey, this is Gerald. The girl looks over at me. And she's like, okay, but like, what's your name? And me being the awesome wingman I am, I was like, his name is Gerald. Kind of giving her the hint. I kind of wanted her to go away from me, even though I, I'm not going to lie. She was hot. She looked kind of like weird at me. And then after she looked at Gerald, she's like, hi, Gerald. How are you? And from there, I ended up just walking away. Now, you guys probably think, okay, why would you hand off a girl like that? That's kind of weird. And I agree it is. But at the same time, you know, like I said, I felt bad for the guy. Anyways, I remember as a group, we all ended up going to the mall together because the mall was like five minutes away from our school. But as we were heading there, I remember how much it sucked being a sixth wheel. Like, I'm sorry, if you're being a sixth wheel or even a third wheel or any sort of wheel in general, just leave. I remember I was planning to go get my car and just basically just go straight home. And as I was on my phone, I realized that someone was right behind me that just walked up beside me. And it was the same girl that I introduced to my buddy, Gerald. Now, this is where things get really weird because I remember it was me, the girl, and then Gerald on the other side. And Gerald was trying so hard to get close to this girl. And then after that, this girl was getting so hard to get close to me. And me, I was just walking. So I remember I ended up turning to the girl and saying, oh, like, did I tell you, like, Gerald, like, he plays uh, basketball? She looks at me and she's like, oh, so like, 
what do you play? She really tried to get my attention. And I know it sounds kind of like, okay, like, you know, why didn't you just, you know, give the girl yourself and just, you know, quit being weird about it. And I'm not gonna lie. I would, but I was already at that state where I was planning on leaving and going home. So, you know, it makes sense. And then eventually throughout the time when we were at the mall, I remember my friend comes over to me and pulls me aside. He says, bro, are you actually like planning on leaving? Cause this girl's all over you. It gets me to the point where I think I should just leave instead. And I remember I looked at him. I told him like, bro, like, don't worry. Keep going for her. I'm not going to say anything, nor am I going to do anything. That's why I initially said, boy, was I wrong. I remember we ended up all as a group going to Starbucks. And this was like no small Starbucks. Like this was a big Starbucks that was like massive. And I remember as we got there, we ended up looking around and we kind of sat down as a group. We all ordered Starbucks. We all got some food, some snacks. And obviously we ended up getting some drinks. Me and my usual Starbucks drinks is a caramel Frappuccino. You guys can laugh at me for it. I think it's pretty cool. Anyways, as we were sitting there all sitting together, the girl ended up sitting beside me and me, I got to the point where I just stood up and started walking away. But as I started standing up and walking away, I remember she kind of like looks over to me and walks over to me saying, oh, excuse me, where are you going? And I told her, oh, I'm probably just going to head home and stuff like that. She's like, can I come with you? And I look at her and I told her like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I'm busy for the rest of the day. Go ahead and ask Gerald. She looks at me again and she's like, well, like, do you have to leave? As she like comes up closer to me and then she starts stroking my leg. Now at that point, I already knew that she was initially in the mood. And I'm sorry, once a girl comes up to you that close and wants to do the devil's tango, you're not going to just be like, sorry, psych. Like, no, it's obviously not something that's going to happen. I remember looking at this and Gerald was like looking from afar and kind of seeing the whole thing go down. And he was pissed off already. So at that point, he like got up and just left. And as he left, I remember he went right through the door, which was kind of near us at the time. And I remember the girl looks over and says, oh, looks like Gerald's gone. And we ended up going back and sitting down, except we weren't sitting down with my friend group again. We were kind of sitting down far away. At that point, my friends were kind of like, you know, not surprised, but weirded out. And they're kind of like winking at me being all like, ooh, like, Bubba's gonna get it, which is not a surprising thing for them. And one thing led to another. I told her I had to go to the bathroom. So I got up, I started going to the bathroom. And when I did, I ended up just going in there. I sat down on the toilet seat and I remember there was a knock on the door. I remember yelling occupied, but then I see this piece of paper slip under the door and it was no normal piece of paper. It was, to be honest, it was one of those sleeves on like a coffee mug that you usually put on it. And I remember it said on it, open the door now. I looked all like kind of weird and kind of like freaked out. And I opened the door and I see it was her. She slips into the bathroom, closes the door right away, and then she just instantly hops onto me. Once she did that, I remember me and her, we ended up doing the devil's tango. And we were just in there. I want to say that went on for like a minimum of like 10 minutes. Not even. Like, like we weren't in there for that long, to be honest. Because what I remember is that my friends were texting me saying, yo, bro, like, where'd you go? Like, the girls have to leave. They have a ride home. And I'm like looking at her and she's looking at me and I'm like, you should go. As we're like midway through it. And she's like, oh, like, let me at least like, you know, like come over to your place maybe later tonight. I looked at her and I'm like, uh, to be honest, I'm busy tonight. In reality, I actually wasn't busy. I just had to play Call of Duty that night. And I remember we both left the bathroom and a Starbucks worker was just kind of like standing on the side, kind of saw us both walking out at the same time. And she looks over and she's like, excuse me, were you guys using the same bathroom? I look at her and I'm like, no. And then after that, the girl's like, no, sorry. And then she just left through the door and went home. And in my head, I'm thinking she really just left. She really just pumped and dumped. Like I, I, like this girl, she, she just pulled a me. To this day, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of surprised that ever happened. And I remember my friends were outside afterwards as well kind of being like, yo, where were you? We're looking for you. And I had to explain to them that I basically ditched them and went to the bathroom and ended up doing the devil's tango. And then I remember that wasn't even the worst part because I think the worst part is that Gerald ended up calling me saying, yo, bro, like the girl that we were talking to, she added me on snap. I think she actually likes me. And then 10 minutes later goes to say, bro, I'm um, actually, she wants your snap. What's your snap so I can give it to her over text. That is crazy. This girl went through Gerald, the guy that I was trying to, you know, introduce her to, to get my snap. That's actually hilarious. I don't know. I found that hilarious right after because Gerald was like talking about it all week. But yeah, that is like basically it. All right, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Seriously, it means a lot when you guys do. And once again, I'm currently live on Twitch down below. So go ahead and click down there to go watch me live. And on top of that, like I always say, fall for more embarrassing stories. All right, peace out, guys. Okay, so honestly, in girl world, there's a lot of things I don't understand. And I think this story is going to show how much I don't understand, even though I do the devil's tango a lot, okay? But honestly, before we get into it, let's just say I love you guys to death. Seriously, you guys are literally changing my life every single day. And also, I do want to talk to you guys and hang out with you guys more. So make sure you guys do follow the Twitch and also come also to the Discord server. Seriously, like just come in the Discord server. Don't just come. N never mind. Anyways, yo, what is going on, you guys? My name is Bubba and welcome back to another crazy story. So this story takes place back, I want to say, in high school. In high school, I'm going to be honest. I was doing the devil's tango a lot, okay? Like I was doing it a lot. But when it came to 
actually like, you know, knowing the proper necessities. The only thing I knew was like the base protection. I didn't know about the plan B. I didn't know about any of those things. I didn't even know that was a general thing in this world. Because let's be real here. Plan A doesn't work. You just go to deal with it and cry about it. That's what I was more used to. But this story of me finding out plan B was really, really difficult. So like I said, back when I was in grade 10, there was this girl that I was talking to. She was in my science class. She was a really nice girl and she was outstanding. Me and her, we always talked and we always like, you know, we, we had that base like friendship. But in reality, like me and her were both already attracted to each other. It's just someone had to make the first move. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. Usually it would be me making the first move. But this time, I don't know. I was kind of like settling a little bit. So I was like, oh, like maybe she'll do it this time. You know, maybe I don't have to do it. By the way, guys, that's never usually the case. But I remember one time on Snapchat, it was a late night. Obviously, when it's a late night on Snapchat, usually things do get freaky. And me and her, we started talking more in depth about things we could do to each other. Yeah, I know. Kind of weird coming from me. But let's be real here. Like, it's part of high school. Like, you, you guys are going to meet girls. You guys are going to have those weird conversations. And you guys are going to have those, like, things. Like, it's, it's general science. It will happen. Unless, you know, you put your head in the books and just pretend no one's around you. Then, I mean, that's a smart way, too. That's how usually, you know, smart people get into big schools and stuff. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So going on, I remember me and her, we had a late night on Snapchat. We talked really freaky, okay? Like, freaky, freaky. And I remember the next day at science class, when we sat beside each other, knowing we just hit that barrier of, like, a new world kind of vibe, you know what I mean? Me and her, we started getting a little touchy as well. It went from, you know, me touching her thigh to her touching me around my thingamabob thingy and uh, so on and so forth. After class, me and her started talking and I remember she asked me, oh, like, like, wh what do you plan on doing today? If you're not doing anything, we can hang out. And in my head, I'm like, shoot, I didn't bring my car because I'm hanging out with my buddy Lane after. So in my head, I'm like, oh, like, you know, like, I'm busy. I'm hanging out with my buddy. Like, sorry, I didn't bring my car today and stuff like that. And she told me, oh, like, what is he doing? And in my head, I'm like, is she gonna, like, want to come with us? Like, is this, is this a thing? So I told her, like, you know, me and him were going for a drive and stuff. And she's like, oh, like, can I come? And I didn't say no specifically, but I did say, give me a minute and let me ask him. Because obviously, you know, if he's a homie and stuff, I'm going to go ask him. And I don't think he would ever turn down inviting girls, like, to hang out. So I remember after that conversation, I went over to Lane. And if you guys don't know Lane, he's a friend of mine. He's a homie. And we, we, we talked for a long time. Like, he's knew me since middle school. And I asked him, yo, like, bro, like, do you have any girls you can invite to, like, hang out for today? And he asked me, like, why? Like, I thought we were doing, like, a guy's thing. And then I say, well, there's a girl I really want to hang out with. And, like, I don't know if, like, you're down to also hang out with her and stuff. You know, it'd be awkward, just three-wheeling. You know what I mean? And he said, okay. And he invited, like, another girl to come hang out. And this was a girl he was actually talking to at the time, I think, as well. So I remember that day after school, me and him, we started actually, like, getting things together. And we planned on what to do together with two girls, basically. Basically, we were planning our double date. That, that's the best way to really explain it. But I'm gonna be realistic with you guys. Planning a double date was not that easy. Like, I had no idea what to do. So what me and my buddy decided at the time was to take him to a movie. And that's what we did. We just took him to an early movie. I think this movie was like around six o'clock. It was a very basic movie. I don't remember what it was, to be honest. I don't know what it is with me in movies. Like, I feel like it's the best way to get a girl to like, you know, watch a movie with you. I, I, I don't know. But after the movie, I'm not gonna lie, we got bored. Since we went to go see an early movie, like I said, at six o'clock, we didn't actually like have a plan for the rest of the day. At first, the girls were thinking, oh, like we should go eat dinner. But in my head, I'm thinking, no, I'm not gonna go eat dinner because that's more money and I I'm gonna be honest, this is only the first date, and like, no, like, it's just not worth it. So, after that, I remember me and her and me and my buddy Lane, we got into his car and planned to go to a viewpoint. But this wasn't a normal viewpoint. If you guys don't know, like, this is a viewpoint where you could, like, literally see the, like, entire city and stuff. And there was some construction up there as well going on at the time. So, like, you know, it was, it was just a nice view. So, I remember me and my buddy, we got into the car. I sat in the back seat with the girl that I was talking to, and he sat in the front seat with the girl he was talking to. We went up and we drove all the way up that massive hill and we parked the car and looked over at the sunset. The sun was setting. We were all talking at first, just hanging out. And then obviously from there, we started getting a little touchy. You know, I got touchy with my girl. He got touchy with his girl. And we started just doing basic makeout sesh. I was in the back seat. He was in the front seat. That was going on for, I want to say like 20 minutes. But let's just say as that was going on, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The girl I was with started going ham. And by going ham, I mean, she was getting to the point where it wasn't just a normal makeout sesh like they were doing. She actually started getting on top of me. And you know, as much as I love my buddy, I don't think he would want me doing it in his car. Like, let's be real here. Doing the devil's tango in your friend's car when he's in the car is it's, it's not really it. And I remember I could just see him like kind of glancing at the rear view mirror, like, oh, uh, are they actually gonna do it in the back of my car? You know what I mean? And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really pushing it. It was mostly the girl that was kind of like getting on, but yeah, anyways, it, it was weird. But yeah, you know, things started going a bit more and more, and the music was loud and stuff. And I'm I, honestly, I was kind of just vibing. You know, I'm not gonna lie, it's an 
scenarios like these, I kind of just vibe and see where the flow takes us. But then I'm not gonna lie. The a girl that my buddy was seeing at the time, let's just say she's a really uptight person. I think that's the best way to really explain it. She was very uptight. And I remember the girl that my buddy was talking to at the time started saying how it's really awkward that it was happening and stuff. She said something like, um, it's really weird how he's like doing it right now in the backseat. Like they're getting way too close. You should tell him to like not do it in the car. And my buddy obviously is like, yo, Bubba. And I'm like, yeah, what's going on? He's like, can you like guys like not do it like that much in the back of my car? So I said, okay. And then I told her like, you know, like we need to tone it down. But then she told me, oh, like there's like a porta potty over there if you want to go there. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, she has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's at least what I thought. But when she pointed out the porta potty, I remember we both got out of the car because it was a small car at the time. And I remember we walked over to the porta potty and then we both went in together. Was I going to watch her pee? No, I did not want to see her push pee. I mean, pee, not push, push and pee. Anyways, sorry. I did not want to see her do any sort of bathroom potty. Okay. But she didn't go in there to do a bathroom potty. She actually went in there and we started making out in the porta potty. And long story short, from making out into a porta potty, we continued it until we actually ended up doing the devil's tango in the porta potty. I know, crazy, right? And I'm not going to lie, in all places, and you guys know I love my bathroom stories, we somehow ended up doing it in a porta potty. That is the most craziest thing in the world. Like to this day, I actually blew my mind that, you know, out of all the bathroom stories we put on this channel, I'd be doing it the one where I actually say I did it in a porta potty because it's like the ultimate dirtiest bathroom in the world. I think we all know that, especially a construction worker porta potty. You guys know how disgusting those are, right? But yeah, we full on did the devil's tango in the porta potty and it was absolutely gross, okay? Like, I'm not gonna lie. I think the only thing that like was actually like holding our entire like session was her holding the toilet seat when I'm just going from behind. Simple as that. That's the only picture I can give you guys without really getting demonetized here, okay? But anyways, after that, I remember we both got out of there and my friend and his girlfriend were just looking like over like to the other side of the car from her side door and just kind of shaking their heads like what the heck is going on like it was just really awkward and i'm not gonna lie this girl she had no regrets doing this so we got back in the car and my friend's girl was like really disgusted and like that's kind of gross and then lane my buddy of mine he's like can't believe you actually did it in the porta potty and honestly let's just say it was really 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 weird you know i'm not gonna lie to you guys out of all the bathroom stories i've done it this was definitely one of the ones that i wish i did not tell sometimes but at the same time though it's my life and i've done a lot of crazy things and you guys will learn that over time but like i always say make sure you guys follow for more embarrassing stories and on top of that make sure you guys follow the twitch and discord if you guys have any questions about any of these stories that i post on this channel and like i always say fall for more embarrassing stories